Hello and um, welcome back to the fourth installment um, of the Inference Talk in the FSL course. Um, so what we're going to talk about in this final part is something called TFCE or Threshold Free Cluster Enhancement and we're also going to say a few words about something called False Discovery Rate. But first let's get on to TFCE, Threshold Free Cluster Enhancement. And before that, uh, we need to just remind ourselves about cluster-based inference. So cluster-based inference is where we assess significance or surprise by the spatial extent, i.e. the size of a cluster of connected voxels. So let's just remind ourselves how we do this. So we start out with the set stat image. Um, so we calculate a statistic image, we have a statistic in each voxel, then we threshold that at some arbitrary set, set level. And it's, you know, it's, it's arbitrary within reason, um, i.e. You know, it has to be over a certain level. And so both around you know, two and a half, three, you know, some, somewhere around there. So we threshold that at an arbitrary level. Then what we do is we then get all the surviving voxels and we turn these into clusters, i.e. we find the connected clusters of, of voxels that are all above this threshold. And you can see there are a number of small clusters and there's a bigger cluster down here, but back, uh, back here. Um, then what we do is we calculate a size threshold. Uh, now before we go any further, I, I, I just because it is a little bit confusing, the fact that we have two thresholds here. So the first one is the initial cluster forming threshold which we decide ourselves within reason as I said. And the second one is the size threshold which is calculated for us either using Gaussian random field theory or using something like randomized and non-parametric method. Now as we go forward in this talk I'm going to refer to this threshold as the size threshold. And that is the threshold that determines if a voxel, or I mean, sorry, if a cluster is significant or not. So we threshold at an arbitrary level, we form the clusters, and then we look at these clusters and look at which of these clusters are bigger than this size threshold. And the ones that are bigger than this size threshold, we say that they are significant. And that, that then is our map of significant clusters. So how do we then choose this set threshold? And as I said, this is arbitrary within reason, and it's a trade-off. And the reason it's a trade-off is that if we choose a low threshold, and so what we have here, we have an example of a profile through a statistical image where we have chosen a low cluster forming threshold. We have a low cluster forming threshold, and this gives us, in this case, one large cluster and one small cluster. Now, if you remember from when we talked about this size threshold, is that if you have a low initial cluster forming threshold, then the size threshold will be high. So in this case, it is likely that we will say this larger cluster is significant, but this cluster is not significant because it is not big enough, it's not large enough, it has a, a large enough spatial extent. On the other hand, if you use a high threshold, that means in this case that we completely miss this cluster, but now because we have a higher cluster forming threshold, the threshold for the size to be significant is smaller. So now chances are we're going to say that this is significant. So depending on if we choose a low threshold or a high threshold, we end up with either this significant or that significant, or if we had a, a some sort of in-between in, in threshold, we might actually have both of them significant. But it's clearly not ideal, this fact that, that this arbitrary threshold will determine for us which of these clusters we are going to find. So in general, cluster cluster-based statistics, it's, it's popular because it's more sensitive than voxel-wise uh, corrective testing, but the results depend on the cluster forming threshold and also on the extent of spatial smoothing in the pre-processing. Right. An attempt to fix this or, or, or alleviate this is something called TFC, threshold-free cluster enhancement. Um, and what that does, it it doesn't really form clusters. 
um, it goes through all the voxels and for each and every voxel it will return a cluster enhanced value. So again this is a profile through an image and we now have this voxel here and we want to know and so this is the raw statistical image you see here this curve. Now we now want to calculate the threshold, so the cluster enhanced value in this point. And the cluster enhanced value at this point is the area under this curve here, right? This is the area under this curve. So that what that means is that any voxel that is surrounding by other value, other voxel with high T statistics will get a lot of support from the surrounding and the enhanced value will be quite large whereas a voxel that is not surrounded by so many high values will not get so much support from surrounding voxel and will not be enhanced so much so i tend to think of this not so much as a of a clustering method as a highly non-linear spatial filter so if we just look at what we have here again we have a profile and we have the original signal that is this gray line here and we have the threshold free cluster enhanced signal so here we have a very sharp peak which means that these voxels here or this voxel here, isn't surrounded by a lot of other high t value voxels so the enhanced value is pretty much the same so it doesn't actually get any enhancement whereas here this voxel here is surrounded by a lot of other voxel values with relatively high t statistics or high high statistics so we get lots of enhancement and similar for those two points here so let's now see um, what this, this what this looks like in practice so what we're doing what we've done here is we've used tfce or just regular cluster based or voxel based inference for fsl vpn um, so if you're looking at, first of all, at the cluster-based inference, this is the red here, so you can see that for each of these clusters, we just have a single color. And that is because the inference there pertains to the whole cluster and the cluster as a whole. Whereas in the TFCE enhanced images, you actually have a graduation of values, which tells you at least a little bit about which of these values might be more or less significant. And we can also see how in here that the voxels that are actually surviving the, the voxel-based inference, they have the higher values in the TFCE-based uh, um, uh, inference. And we can see we're actually picking up more things with the TFCE inference than we are doing with just the cluster-based or the voxel-based inference. Um, and this is also TFCE is what we are recommending for TPSS. And the reason for that is that it's it's kind of hard to see anything else that might potentially work when you are working on the skeleton as we're doing in, in TBSS. Right, so the final thing we want to talk about is something called false discovery rate or FDR. And it's sort of it's a it's a new way, so it's a new kind of philosophy to look at inference. So if you remember the different types of inference we could have had in an, an imaging experiment is that we have it uncorrected for multiple comparisons and that means on average 5% of all the voxels are false positives if we're assuming that a majority of the voxels for a majority of the voxels the null hypothesis is true. Family vice error, i.e. when they're corrected from multiple, multiple comparison on the other hand, then on average in 5% of all experiments do we have one or more false positive voxels. And, and this tends to be what we want. But the problem with this is that quite often that leads to a threshold for significance that is forbiddingly high. So chances are that we have very, very little sensitivity and we might not get any significant at all. Now, false discovery rate instead says that on average 5% of those voxels that I report as significant are false positives. So it's kind of a little bit hard to get your head around how this is different. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a little imaging demonstration to show uh, what this leads to. So just to present the data, we have some noise, we have some signals. So essentially this 
circle here that is the activation that's the activation that we would like to pick up and we have the single plus noise images then what we're doing is we're looking at uncorrected voxel wise control of horse body rate that's 10 percent and it may not at the five percent level here and that's because we had 10 instead of 20. so we can see that a percentage of all null pixels that are false positives so 10% of all the voxels outside the true activation are false positives. Control of family bias error rate at 10% means that only in one of these 10 experiments do we have a false positive, i.e. a significance outside of the true activation. But at the same time you can see that we actually see very little inside this area where we know that all of this is activated. FDR, false discovery rate control at 10% on the other hand, gives us a much better delineation of the actual, act actual activation, but now 10% of the voxels that we have reported as activated, there's all of these, are now false positives, which is a lot less than 10% of all uh, uh, null pixels. So it's a you, you can see it as a a different trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. And interestingly, in the case where the null hypothesis is false everywhere, such that we don't actually report any true uh, activations, then this um, sort of falls back and becomes the same or close to the family-wise error rate. So, false discovery rate for them. Make assumptions about error, how errors are distributed, so they have to be normal distributed for this to work. Um, we can use it to calculate a threshold, and, and it's surprisingly easy. Interestingly, the threshold depends on the data. So for all the other methods, the threshold is independent on the data, but here, you can have very different thresholds, for example, for the 1, 0 and 0, 1 contrast in the same study. And um, that's all. And um, thank you very much for your attention.